Can former NBA superstar Dwight Howard actually convince John Morant to leave the NBA and go play basketball in Taiwan? Let's talk about it. Get ready to learn Chinese, buddy. Get ready to learn Chinese, buddy. It won't be long before you're playing point guard for the Wong Dong Tigers. Yo, this is pretty funny, Andrew. Did you expect that to become such a popular meme on NBA social media? Man, I wanted to learn Chinese for actual reasons, but everybody's got to learn Chinese because they're banished from the NBA and they got to go play basketball in the CBA. <laughs> for the uh, Guangdong Tigers or yo, the Tao Yuan Leopards. Yo, that was crazy that they made memes about Dylan Brooks, Jordan Poole, everybody. But anyways, David, we're not here just to talk about that meme, although... Playing basketball in China is now a meme amongst NBA Twitter, but we're talking about Dwight Howard. Yes, he is going viral on sports websites, Andrew, as well as non-sports websites right now for two reasons. One, for roasting everybody who had subpar playoff performances, as well as John Morant to come to the, uh, Taiwan to play basketball since their like status is going down in the NBA. And number two, Andrew, he actually got involved in a geopolitical incident. So Dwight Howard, Andrew, you know his personality, probably loves attention. Well, I'll tell you this, Andrew, he's not in the NBA anymore, but he is back on the front page of the news. Well, I'll tell you this, Dwight Howard's trying to learn some Chinese right now. <laughs> Ni hao, wo shi, hu ha de. Uh, all right, everybody, please uh, hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys because this has to do with being Asian and the NBA, and you know we love it. So let's get into the comment section, David. Real quick, I got to provide some quick backstories, Andrew. Dwight was getting older, right? He was trying to get a spot in the NBA. He couldn't do it. He made an unconventional choice. He went to the T1 Basketball League in Taiwan, not the CBA that Marbury went to, right? And uh, then he really increased, increased Taiwan basketball's exposure exponentially in one season. Right, especially him and Jeremy Lin, Jeremy being in the P-plus league, uh, Dwight being in the T1 league. So both leagues kind of had a star of their own, yeah. right? And uh, actually... Eccentric NBA All Stars, Andrew. They play an outsized role in like geopolitical relations between the East and the West. But we're gonna get into that later, Andrew. The first comment was, uh, "Demarcus Cousins, I'll be playing in Puerto Rico. Can Dwight and Demarcus Cousins still be in the NBA right now? Like, could they help a team guard Jokic uh, in the post?" Long story short, I think physically and skill wise, maybe they could still be on a roster. But I think attitude wise, a lot of people don't want to deal with Boogie Cousins. And then Dwight might be a little slow, to be honest. Yeah, they would hunt him and put yeah. him in the pick and rolls uh, on defense. Somebody said, uh, Taiwan is a great place to play pro sports, man. It's like a non evil version of China to me. <laughs> Clean, modern English is spoken widely, great manners. I love it. Dude, I'll play some T1 League highlights down below. It looks fun, man. The cheerleaders are going viral. They're shooting air out of the top of the uh, shot clock. It right, just, right. All the players are on the bench doing the little eye blast yeah. celebrations. It's, there, it's a the really thing. small league, um, but it seems like they're having fun. For sure, for sure. I mean, they're bringing that beachy funness that Taiwan is known for. Ooh. Somebody said, Dwight, you're already rich. Why dunk on a bunch of short Asians over in Taiwan, <laughs> huh? Why do you want to do it? Guys, I'm not going to lie. A lot of highlights from street ballers or, or <laughs> dribbling coaches always come from, like, shaking, like, Asian kids oh, <laughs> trying man. to in America them. and nah, in Asia. Nah, even shout out to Bone Collector and shout out to all those guys. Professor. But yeah, yeah <laughs> Professor. They shake a lot of Chinese guys. But anyways, um, regardless of that fact, I guess uh, Dwight, he's, it, think about it. You're a, you're a former NBA superstar. You still want to play basketball. Your kind of image and branding in the NBA kind of got a little bit like embarrassing. Like people started to make fun of Dwight Howard. And listen, he gets to be the biggest man on campus in Taiwan. Right, he gets People to be Kawhi it. in Canada. Yeah, and he's just like, he's fun. He's fun-loving. He's trying to learn the culture a little bit. So pretty much, I think they're accepting him, and he has a lot of fans. And by the way, guys, we're going to get into it later. Andrew, eccentric NBA personalities. Dennis Rodman, Marbury, Dwight Howard. For some reason, they can just bridge the gap. I don't know, just more than you think. Um, Dwight, obviously, he also had a geopolitical incident where he called Taiwan a country in a promotional video for a politician. This is the thing that made him go viral again, Andrew, even on, like, Fox News. Right, because a lot of people who were into the NBA might have heard about Dwight going to Taiwan if you kept up with it. But... This reached like mainstream geopolitical news. Even people who don't care about basketball, right. right? Just care about like the China US issue. Somebody said, come on, guys, let's be honest. Dwight is over in Taiwan because he is probably getting with so many Asian girls. This was a real comment, guys. I know. I, you know, it's a little bit un PC, uh, but yeah, I, I had I to mean, pick it out. Dwight can probably, yeah, just fly in all his friends and whoever he wants. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, 
who knows? Somebody said, uh, you know, let's talk about John ja Morant's situation, Andrew, because obviously Dwight also went viral for tweeting at John ja Morant saying, come on, Ja, come on over to Taiwan because yeah. they're about to kick you out of the NBA, but make sure you just leave that thing at home. Right, because Ja is going through these issues of him holding guns and, and people don't know what's going to happen to John ja Morant in the league. I'm sure, I, I think he won't get kicked out of the NBA, but he could get suspended. But the joke is that Dwight's like, yo, John ja Morant, why don't you come to Taiwan, you know, because basically you got to leave the NBA. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think realistically with the John ja Morant situation, uh, I do not think he's going to go play in Taiwan. No. I do not think he would play in the CBA. No. Uh, I think it would be way more likely if he did get kicked out, he'd go play a year in Puerto Rico with DeMarcus. I mean, I don't, I don't think he would do that either, but I'm just saying Puerto Rico sounds fun. Um, I'd say realistically, I think Ja's going to get at least a 16-game suspension, 2X of the eight-game mm -hmm. suspension he got last year. Why right. not double it up, right? Do you think uh, Dwight Howard can actually recruit more other, like, NBA players to play in Taiwan specifically? And no, I'm not talking about, obviously, the Taiwan leagues and the CBA are completely different, but I'm saying, like, do you think he can recruit some to play in the small leagues to build up Taiwan? Because Taiwan is, it operates differently than China, obviously. For sure, you know, for sure. So I mean, I think different. it's way more loose over there. There's way, you know, it's just more fun. It's beachy. It's more sunny than, for sure, Beijing. Wow. So I think that... He can, because prior to Dwight Howard playing in the T1 league, I believe that the highest profile players playing in either league, P plus or T1, was OJ Mayo. And previously before that, Jeremy Lin's younger brother. Right. And now Jay Lin's over there. Obviously, his season just ended. I hope he's okay with his injury. He comes mm -hmm. back next season. Why not, right? Uh, wouldn't you say, Andrew, that a lot of players are playing in Puerto Rico now because DeMarcus Cousins sort of like made it extra cool yeah it depends on what they build and the impact like obviously i think a lot of players also played in the cba partially because stefan marbury so once one guy breaks through and kind of shows the life and can kind of even mentor you and kind of tell you maybe they have people on their squad that are like hey uh like maybe stefan was like hey man this guy's coming to play in the league can you go like mentor him tell him how to move and how to deal with things and how i did it you know uh, so like it depends on if they set up a system for future players to come by, then yeah, more players will come by. And I do think that even the style of play in the CBA right now, it's overly physical, Andrew, and it's not fun enough. There's no three in the key. The pigs, the bigs pack the paint, take away all the driving angles. Uh, Andrew, foreigners take up 70% of the usage rate. That means that the ball is not distributed amongst like all five starters. Man, yeah. Are you trying to say that uh, China's not as fun? <laughs> yeah, they got to rework the CBA. They just went through a big uh, internal gambling situation. But I don't know what's going on in CBA. I, but I don't want I don't want to knock on the CBA and the CBA fans because a lot of Chinese basketball fans, especially Chinese people in China who are fans of the NBA or people who are in the Chinese speaking part of the world, um, they have a lot of hilarious nicknames for people. Yeah. Like the Chinese translations of the nicknames are some of the best that I've heard. Yeah, I know that Dwight, when he was on the Magic, was called Magic Beast. And then when he had a real downside year with the Lakers, they called him Evil Baby. Yeah, they he was even, like whining like a baby. They even used to call Michael Jordan Gang Boss. And they used to call James Harden Free Throw Mamba because he would get to the free throw line so much. And anybody, Mamba would be obviously like based off of the Kobe. So anybody who could do that one thing really good got the Mamba tag. Yeah, they called Andrew Wiggins a uh, strength conservation Mamba because yeah. it looks like he's not playing hard. Right? And they called Ryan Anderson standing around Mamba because he would stand around at the three-point line. And they called Isaiah Thomas, the short one, 175 Mamba, right? Because he was only 175 centimeters tall, but yeah. he was a beast. Yeah, he was the greatest of that. Yeah. And then, uh, so it's just, man, I, there's this whole like thread that I was think. I just, it kind of comes down to how much like Chinese speaking people love the NBA. They love it, like, bro. I cannot tell you between the Chinese speaking countries, bro. They love the NBA. Like, Yo, it is it. literally the closest thing I could describe it to is real life Dragon Ball Z. You know how in Dragon Ball Z, everybody's like Vegeta versus Goku versus this and this and this. I think people in Chinese speaking countries treat the NBA like real life Dragon Ball Z. Bro. It, and it's, it's, I, and I think the way they look at, because it's almost like the NBA players are kind of there like superheroes yeah. or their cartoon characters comic like, book heroes they're 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 superhumans in a way like they know they're human but they just are flying through the air and wow, doing all these cool I, things that they I like. still remember when you're like superman children it's amazing <laughs> i still remember Dwight, remember when uh all the chinese fans left that uh video for d rose when d rose was his career in america was going downside and made d rose cry yeah i mean 
Long story short, Andrew, back to my more geopolitical takeaway. Why do you think people like Dennis Rodman and his friendship with Kim Jong-un and Marbury, his uh, statue that he has in Beijing, as well as Dwight now in Taiwan, why do these former eccentric personality, gregarious NBA all-stars have such a crazy way of like relating to the East. I think at the end of the day, basketball is a universal language that despite what is going on geopolitically between the two countries on a sports level, everybody can always share love with each other. So it's like Stefan Marbury's out there. And you know, if you follow Stefan Marbury on Instagram, you'll see that he does post a lot about anti-China stuff along with like anti-black stuff that's happening in America. So he's just talking about all the kind of like issues that he cares about that he's trying to like, you know, help, like, uh, kind of bridge the gap between. Mapuli. Yeah, so it means a lot. I think it gives them meaning more, too. Because think about it. Dwight Howard, he could be chilling in America, partying every day. He made so much money. He's super tall. Everybody knows him. He's famous, right? But I think America, a lot of people did want to make fun of him and clown on him. You know what I mean? Yeah, For because a lot he was corny, things. and it's sort of like China Clay, where everybody thought Clay Thompson was this really like sheltered, awkward dude. But then remember, uh, Clay Thompson was like leading the whole club with the DJ yeah. in China and stuff. Like it's kind of like you kind of come to Asia for a second life, for a mm. second career, a, a fresh start. They only know you for the good things. They don't really care about the American rumors or whatever. You're not like, cool, you're yeah, corny, like, you have cheesy like, sense of humor. It's not that Dwight's not cool in Taiwan. He's cool, that's it. He came there, he's cool. And, he, and as long as he is open and nice to people and respectful to the culture and plays hard, they're gonna like him. I think there needs to be more research done into why these NBA All-Stars like couldn't just bridge the gap. All right, it's, guys, it's, in the comments down below, let me know which other NBA players you realistically think would actually go to play in the CBA or in Taiwan League. Ooh, let me know. I'm like, trying to think of someone. John not, Morant's not going. All yeah, right, John's not going. Pat Bev, I don't, I don't think, think he's so. Going. He has a, he has the gregariousness, but I don't know if he who like would it. fit because you kind of need a personality to be out there. Because you need to, like, stomach being in a completely different culture and environment. Yeah, you kind of need a wacky person. Yeah. A little bit. Um, Andrew, real quick, just to do a quick hitter of some NBA topics. Andrew, what do you think about Victor Wembanyama? This is really big in the NBA right now. ESPN called him the greatest prospect ever. Of course, a lot of people are like, no way, that's Braun. How good is he realistically going to be? I have no idea because, like, I know he's been doing well in his, uh, what, French league that he's yeah. in. But, like, he hasn't been doing, like what LeBron was doing. Is he going to be more like Chet Andrew or Porzingis plus KD plus Bull Ball? I have no idea, man. It's very hard to say because I feel like a lot of the big men, I'm not going to lie, of the past like eight years have kind of been disappointing. Right. You're talking about Andre Bargnani. But but Porzingis had highlights. And at Porzingis' peak, if he could have kept his peak up, obviously he seemed like he was going to be a great. But he, he couldn't. He got injured and all this stuff. I believe that every player over 7'3", statistically, every single one has that significant injury. Yeah, I think it's really going to come down to his IQ and his mentality. And that's going to keep him healthy and keep him getting better. But, of course, he has the tools to be great. I would actually keep him on the perimeter for the first couple of years to test out his body and his strength. Interesting. Before I put him in the paint and, and get him all injured. David, what do you think it's going to take for more players to go play in Puerto Rico? Puerto Rico is another market that a lot of players are choosing to play. It's much closer it, to America. I think, to be honest, the off-court life is way funner. Yeah, it's more, uh, I mean, it is technically an American territory. So, right. yeah. I guess uh, DeMarcus Cousins chose to play in Puerto Rico, not Asia. What do you think? I would just say this. Um, I think it's going to come up. I think it depends on the infrastructure of the league and how much they invest in it. But it being an American territory, uh, Commonwealth is huge. Um, long story short, Andrew, why do you think that this became such an issue? Like, it sounds like we're just talking about a sports issue, but there's a lot of soft power and geopolitics involved even in Dwight going to Taiwan and all these things going viral and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't think it shifts anything geopolitically, but I guess, like, Dwight is in a way, the biggest Taiwanese athlete right now. Yeah. Oddly enough, he, I know he's not Taiwanese blood-wise, but the fact that he's playing in Taiwan and he's so viral and he's a former superstar superstar. Like I'm saying, I think he's going to be a Hall of Famer at some point, right? They're going right. to induct him. But I'm saying, like, I guess he's one of the best players probably to ever play in Asia. Yeah, they'll probably ask him to join the national team. I doubt he'll, you know... Take it, but they'll probably oh, give him temporary Oh, interesting, yeah. Anyway, guys, basketball diplomacy in Asia, guys. More research has to be done on this. And I think 
these old white geopolitical guys, they need to get on this, man. I don't think they understand basketball. Is this the new trend? Hey, just Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Let us know what you think. Dwight going viral. Jaws going viral. You better learn Chinese. Buddy's going viral. Just a lot of stuff with Asia, Chinese-speaking countries, and the NBA going viral right now. Let us know what you think in the comment section uh, below. Until next time, we the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Ni hao. Wo, wo shir di Leon Brooks. And wo... Wo dong gao xing joining the Sichuan... Uh, uh, these memes are hilarious. Oh, the Sichuan Blue Whales. Yeah, the Sichuan Blue Whales. All right, guys. Till next time, we out. Peace.